There are AI tools that generate text, images and even videos, but how about some 3D objects so that we can transform the digital creation of an artificial intelligence into a real thing, with a 3D printer of course. Is it possible? Yes it is. How well it works? I will show you in this video. We'll take an in-depth look at Dimension Tools right after the sponsor message. This video is sponsored by Opera Browser. Browsing the internet is a big part of our life and work nowadays. And if something takes a significant amount of my time, I really like to look into ways of making it as efficient as I can. And Opera Browser can definitely help you with that. This video is focused on AI and Opera also has built-in AI tools. It's called ARIA and I found it very useful. It's easily accessible in the sidebar, you can also highlight the text on the website and ask ARIA to explain. It can also answer any of your questions not connected to the website or even generate some code for you. Opera also features Tab Islands, a very intuitive way to navigate and organize all of your tabs, such a simple but also such a useful feature for everyone that's deep into research for a new project. I have been there multiple times, getting lost with all the tabs that I opened, so having them nicely organized really makes a difference. Without any additional extensions or plugins, you have a VPN built into the browser. It's free and unlimited and lets you easily hide your location. These are just a few of many features you can find in the Opera browser. Use my link in the description to try it out and I hope you will enjoy it. Thanks a lot to Opera for sponsoring this video. Point E generates a cloud of points which usually looks like that. If you zoom out a bit then you can see the shape of the object and it's pretty rough with no details but it's definitely there. Is it any useful for 3D printing? I don't think so. Sure, you can convert the cloud of points into a file that can be 3D printed, but there is just so little data in there that you won't get good results. In their scientific paper about point E, they even mentioned that low quality is a serious limitation, but there is still a potential to generate dangerous objects that then can be 3D printed. But still, point E is completely free and you can play with it even without logging in. Link to point E is in the description. 3DFY or 3DFI is not free, so that's a huge downside. You get 10 free credits in the beginning, but you can't download any of the generated objects without paying. It is focused on interior design type of objects and gaming, but the categories are very, very limited. I tried to generate a few objects and they look okay. The textures are not super high quality, but the shape of the object is very solid. Usually, at least for me, the object didn't match the prompt super well, but for some kind of interior design or gaming, this can be a great tool, of course, if you want to pay for it. And that could be in fact very very nice tool to generate 3D models, it might still be in some case of interior designers, but the next option and the next tool can give you similar results and is entirely free. Genie from Luma.ai is made in a form of a Discord server, it's completely free at the time of recording this video, they don't even have a paid version. The server is usually pretty calm and you can generate your objects easily and incredibly fast. You can also see what other people have generated, there is a showcase channel where you can see the best models created by the users. And simply by using Genie command and entering your prompt you can generate whatever you want and it seriously works that fast, there is no cut in this video, it takes just a few seconds and your model is ready. In fact, four different versions of your model and then you can choose to create variations of this model or create a higher quality version that you can download later. According to their guide, you can get the best results when adding Pixar render, Disney render or DreamWorks style to the prompt. And you should avoid generating text on objects, transparent objects or including multiple elements in one prompt. Generally, the shorter the prompt is, the better. After generating, you can easily download your model in multiple formats and even optimize it for 3D printing. Some of these models look incredibly impressive and if you are working on game development, especially for mobile devices, where super high quality models are not required, this is a complete game changer. But how well will it work with 3D printing? Here are a few examples of the models I generated. With the texture this looks very nice, but when you look at a raw STL file with no texture then suddenly almost all the magic is gone, but for some of them the shape and details are good enough to be 3D printed, so let's take a look at a few printed models. 
For all of these models, in the bottom left corner you can find the prompt that I used to generate them, but keep in mind that even if you use the very same prompt, the result will be completely different. The bat is super cute, I like this model a lot, without the texture it's not that impressive but still really decent. The space alien Buddha, cool with the texture, really perfect model, and not that much when 3D printed, it was also printed at really high speed, so it is not that perfect when it comes to just the quality of the print. I really like the frog because if even the arms and the fingers are super cool and this model was edited a bit with my mixer which I will show you later. I really wanted to have a space dog in a space suit and I generated a lot of different models but this one I like the most because even without the texture it still resembles a dog definitely and probably like a space dog one of the legs broke but that's the fault of a 3D printer. And lastly we have a monster. The prompt wasn't really meant to generate a monster, but it ended up really good and of course there are some problems with fingers and arms, but other than that, the face, the back of the monster, it's a really nice model. Before printing, it's a good idea to make the bottom of the model flat. I did that with Prusa Slicer, but you can also use Mesh Mixer, which I will show you later. Having the bottom of the model flat reduces the chance of a printing failure as it sticks to the build plate much better. The models were printed on my good old 3D printer and they're free. It still works very well, but it is just so slow compared to some modern machines. I also used FL Sun V400, which is the first Delta type printer I tried. The printing speed compared to Ender is quite impressive. If you would like to complain that these models are not good enough and that they lack details and give poor results with 3D printing, hold on a moment. Genie is not perfect, definitely, but that's one of the first AI solutions that can do that. It's only the beginning, so think about how good it might be in a few years. Will it impact the employment? Probably yes. But so did the industrial revolution. A lot of time passed since then and humans are still working in the factories. But their job is more efficient and safer, so in my personal opinion, we shouldn't ban or limit any kind of AI technology as long as it is good for humanity and does not try to exterminate us from this planet. But I am curious to hear what you think in the comments. And of course, if you want to edit some of the models, that's also possible with another free software called Mesh Mixer. I'm really not good at this kind of sculpting and modifying the models, but I wanted to show you that it is possible and in fact quite easy to do. Maybe it will be a good starting point for some sculptures. For the frog, I just try to enhance some details and the eyes, and as mentioned in Mesh Mixer, you can also cut the bottom of the model to make it flat. I had an ambitious plan to paint some of the models to make them look exactly as generated by Genie. Problem with painting 3D printed parts is that it takes so much time. I tried doing that before with a part for one of my robots, where in the end I wasn't really happy with the result, and with 3D printed Astronaut, where the result was really really nice, but only after a week of work. I still have the Astronaut and keep it on my space related shelf right here. So even though I did it in the past, I'm definitely not good at it, I don't have the patience and skills required to really paint these kind of models nicely. Fortunately, my girlfriend has buff, so I asked her to help me and paint this space dog model. Of course, everything was sanded and prepared so that the final model looks nicely. She also fixed the broken leg that broke off during printing and that was simply fixed with hot glue. Then few layers of paint and of course a lot of details, but these details are crucial to turn a raw model from Genie into something that looks so nice. Thanks a lot for help. While it is incredibly time consuming, the result is also very satisfying. And as you can see in case of the space dog model that was generated by artificial intelligence, it might look just so, so good. And if you don't like a space dog, you can easily generate anything else because your perfect 3D model might be just one prompt away. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks to Oprah for sponsoring. Happy making. Bye.